Good morning and welcome to another Budget Model Railways review uh, of some Metcalf kits. And today we're looking at uh, the brand new, in fact, I, thank you very much Metcalf, I think I was one of the first people in the country to receive one of these, um, grimy old mill and industrial overbridge. So uh, to keep in the rules, say right from the beginning that I was supplied these uh, very kindly by Metcalf to review, um, but obviously that doesn't have an impact uh, on what I'm going to say. So straight off then, uh, two uh, very useful items here. Um, those of you that have seen the review for uh, Metcalf's old factory know what a huge fan I was of that. Um, built a whole railway uh, layout around that. Um, and these are very much in the same vein. Now I would say right from the off that these are available in double O as well as N. Certainly in double O uh, they would be very striking buildings. Um, so the comments that I make about this for N will be equally as applicable, in fact, for double O. So if you're watching this thinking, well, I don't do N, uh, well, actually, this review is, is just as good for the double O versions. Um, I will just quickly talk about the buildings and then I'll comment a little bit more about their construction uh, and so on. Uh, but I know for all sorts of reasons, people don't watch to the end of the videos. So I thought rather than doing, if you like, the boring stuff first, then let's have a look at the building straight up. So it's made in two halves like so. Uh, and obviously, like these Metcalf buildings, that gives you an awful lot of versatility because you've got the option there of putting it together as one big building. And as always, if you decide to do that, they supply edging strips, roofing uh, covers and so on. Uh, there's some very nice um, tiles to go on the edges. I haven't put them on this because I haven't decided what to do with the building yet. In fact, when I do mine, they've got uh, red tiles and I'm going to use some grey ones off another sheet. Um, and that then obviously gives you a couple of options. You can have them side by side in various combinations. You could have them at the entrance to a layout. And that's when this comes in, uh, which is the very good industrial overbridge. Because obviously, were you to put that, say, something like that, um, I'm just going to put that back into place. Move the camera angle. wasn't very good. Um, something like that. Um, then, in fact, you could do what I do like to do, which is avoid the classic overbridge. And you could have your rail line coming out of there um, and onto your layout. The options continue with this rather nice little doorway. Uh, whilst it fairly obviously goes there, you could, of course, put it wherever you like on your buildings, depending on where you want it to put it. Um, and I've seen some very interesting thing done, things done with the old factories with the combinations. Um, so obviously this would go with that. It would go with the old brewery that they do. What I do like about it is that it's in stone and not brick. Um, the brick for me is getting a little bit overdone. In fact, I was only looking at a magazine today to see yet more red brick um, build it, you know, Metcalf buildings. Uh, great, but it is getting a little bit obvious now. And for me, who models freelance and, if you like, European, I think these have got much more appeal being in stone. They almost art deco, you know, could be almost a modern building. Don't look out of place in a modern layout being stone. Um, and I think that's a big advantage. I know when I did the reviews of the other buildings, a couple of people said, well, why didn't, are they going to do it in brick? Uh, they may well do. Um, my view is I wouldn't. I think these uh, are particularly useful as they are. Quite a long build, these, um, relatively fiddly, and I took my time to do it properly. And, and it took me well over four and a half hours to make all of this. But then I enjoy that. I, I chuck some music on, chuck some heavy rock on on my headphones, and I'm quite happy to sit for a couple of evenings making buildings. I find it quite therapeutic. Um, there's nothing frustrating in the construction of these. Um, it's just a bit, if you like, slow and methodically working your way through it. So let's look at the construction. So first off, don't even think about building these without some kind of fine scale applicator. These are the Metcalf ones. Um, I find they're a godsend, uh, particularly the windows. So the first few of these I built, I tried using a tube of, you know, you clear glue. Yes, complete nightmare, gets everywhere. Um, use an applicator with your clear glue in. Um, and I certainly wouldn't, if you're gonna build a Metcalf building, find a few extra quid and buy these. I have found one small flaw with these, which isn't going to apply to anybody else. I buy my PVA, I don't even know if I can get it in the camera, like this, by the gallon. Um, 
That's five litres from Screwfix for about 12 quid. It's superb PVA, and that makes it in infinitely cheaper than buying the, the more specialist ones. Uh, and I go through a lot of PVA. Um, however, trying to pull pour from a five, ga five litre gallon tub into these is a bit tricky. But that's not meant as a criticism of these. I thought people might just find that amusing. Um, the construction of these, as always, thanks to the exceptionally good Metcalf um, instructions. And as I've said time and time again, just follow the instructions. Now, interestingly in this, I was a bit surprised when they did the windows that it wasn't more descriptive until I realised that you've got twos, threes, ones on the side. They don't really need to say put WF1 here. You can actually work it out for yourself. Um, it is, as I say, a very solid construction. These now have a hollow base, double thickness base. Um, and that, aligned with the very thick back, makes for a very substantial building. And those of you used to, shall we say, some of the other alternatives out there are, are very much more flimsy. These are very robust. I did change, uh, normally I say follow the instructions religiously. I did slightly copy, I uh, slightly change from that in that when I was making building B, it says quite rightly to be careful of, I can't find the page now. It says very uh, quite correctly to be, once you've removed these, these are quite flimsy. And actually what I did is I didn't remove them until I put all the windows in to keep the strength. You can speed the build up a little bit while you're building, your um, windows are gluing on building A. You can obviously do doors and some of the other pieces. But they are, it's a very solid construction and the instructions are really simple to follow. I do like this. So these are the, the idea now where they put coping stones. Now you're still going to get a white line there, but of course um, that's really easy to cover. Felt tip pen, watercolour paint. Actually with this building, because it's grey, I used a, soft, a sharp soft pencil. Ran it up and down a couple of times, no white lines. Um, I particularly like the loading bay. Um, the loading bay just cries out to have a lorry parked in there. Um, great little feature that. This is, was really easy to build. Uh, three different components uh, and you can extend it slightly. It also occurred to me that actually if you cut the roof down and had a very sharp knife, you could shorten it if you needed to. They've designed it so it can go at different angles. Um, and I think that will be a very useful component. So yet again, some very, very clever buildings from Metcalf. What I particularly have found interesting with them is the height of them. They're um, five stories high. Uh, that is going to be the height normally of a vaccine. So I'm thinking about the possibility of doing a layout where I wouldn't need to worry too much about the vaccine. And I also like the idea, as I said, of perhaps putting them as the entrance to a layout, something like that, with the tracks coming in underneath. So that's Grimy Old Mill and Industrial Overbridge. As I say, available in both N and O. Very enjoyable to build, um, not, not fiddly at all. Uh, I've said with one or two of the other buildings in N that they are a bit fiddly. These aren't, um, even in N with me, with my arthritic fingers and <laughs> failing eyesight, got them built, no trouble. And in double O, they'd be absolutely no trouble. Although they would be, as I say, big, impressive buildings. I can see these being every bit as popular as the old factory and the brewery. And I can see some really interesting layouts being made with all three or four kits. And you can guess where my mind's going. I will say thank you to Metcalf. Um, I'll give them a little plug. Firstly, I do like their buildings or I wouldn't review them. Um, I do think they're very good value for money. I think they fit well into the budget range. Um, and they, despite, <laughs> I suppose, understandably, but... I've approached all sorts of uh, manufacturers and suppliers to see if they would supply review items. Hornby did originally many years ago and then stopped. Um, and I think full credit to Metcalf that they're embracing the more uh, modern outlook, if you like. I think this is the way the hobby's going. Things like YouTube and so on. I don't know if that came out. That was Douglas ringing me on the phone as I was doing a video. Um, 
but there's an interesting thing where people are saying about um, Worley and Hattons and uh, magazine subscriptions going down. Yes, but is anybody taking into account the huge number of people watching Instagram, watching YouTube? You know, we have 33, uh, nearly 30,000 subscribers on YouTube. We have 3,000 followers on Instagram. Some of our videos have 27, 30,000 watchers. Um, perhaps that's the way the hobby is moving and the more traditionalists looking at shows and magazines aren't seeing the true picture. And certainly I've spoken to a number of other big retailers who are absolutely booming. So I think it's a really interesting thing that perhaps the hobby is moving like this to different formats. And perhaps some other suppliers might want to look at supporting some of us who are promoting items in a slightly different way to the tradition. In any case, uh, excuse my rant. Thank you to Metcalf. And these are wonderful buildings. Don't hesitate. If you're the least bit interested in these in N or double O, I would crack on and treat yourself to some. Thank you as always for watching and more videos out soon.